Hi, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So new research, exciting new research, has come up with a new version of NMN, um, a more effective and a more efficient way of producing NAD. Also, hopefully, a cheaper way of us being able to raise our NAD levels. So enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and see what this new study and this new reduced form of NMN has to offer. This is a review of a piece I read in lifespan.io, which was authored by Steve Hill. I was sent this link by a viewer and I do apologize, but I can't find their name anywhere. If it was you, please leave a comment here and I will pin your name to the top of the comments list. Recently, there has been a lot of interest centering around NAD boosters or NAD precursors, NAD standing for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, and in particular, nicotinamide mononucleotide or NMN and nicotinamide riboside or NR. However, a new study published in the FASEB on the 15th of March 2021 suggests that a newly discovered form of NMN is far more effective. It's called reduced nicotinamide mononucleotide or NMNH for short. Regular viewers will know that nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide is a coenzyme found in all of our living cells and without it David Sinclair says we will be dead in less than 10 seconds. NAD is a dinucleotide which means it consists of two nucleotides joined through their phosphate groups. One nucleotide contains an adenine base and the other contains nicotinamide. It appears in two forms in our body, NAD, and in its reduced state, NADH. NAD is essential for life. It is one of the most important molecules in our body. So saying that, what does it actually do? Well, in our body, it supports DNA repair and it activates our sirtuin proteins. It also facilitates many bodily processes such as glycosis and the citric acid cycle. You may remember this as it's more commonly called the Krebs cycle. It also allows the electron transport chain inside our mitochondria to function correctly. Mitochondria are our cells powerhouses. They serve as batteries powering various functions inside our cells. Because NAD is vital to life, we as humans have evolved to synthesize this through three main pathways. The first pathway is the priest handler pathway. In this pathway, the precursor nicotinic acid or NA, which is found in food, is converted into NAD through a three part enzymatic process facilitated by NAPRT. The second pathway is known as the de novo pathway. Here, niacin molecules are literally created from nothing by our bodies using the essential amino acid L-tryptophan or TRP. The de novo pathway intersects with the priest handler pathway, where together they both go on to become NAD. The third pathway is the salvage pathway. This pathway converts nicotinamide, also known as NAM, and also called niacinamide, into NAD. This pathway has nicotinamide mononucleotide as an intermediate, and nicotinamide riboside also uses this same pathway. Regardless of the pathway, all NAD ends up here in the salvage pathway, constantly being recycled until another process causes it to be lost. Multiple studies suggest that as we age, our NAD levels decline significantly. And for that reason, the rebuilding of NAD levels has been the focus of much research in the recent past. The two most popular precursors NMN and NR are marketed as dietary supplements, but both have their issues. NMN and NR both have limitations, such as their NAD boosting effects, which are around twofold and therefore need higher doses, which come at a financial cost 
to the user. NR has its own more localized issues. NR has been shown to increase NAD levels in human blood, but it fails to increase NAD levels in tissue such as skeletal muscle, despite the very high dose. Researchers discuss this issue in the Ole L. Dellerup paper in detail. There's a link in the description below to this paper. The research suggests that NR's inefficiency in raising NAD might explain why NR has no apparent effect on total energy expenditure, blood glucose or insulin sensitivity in humans. Let's now look at the new study and there is a link in the description below to that study. The reduced version of NMN, NMNH, seems to increase nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide or NAD more effectively than both NMN and NR. The study suggests that reduced NMN, NMNH, is a much more powerful NAD precursor. According to the results that have been seen in both mice and human cells, the researchers have developed a method for creating and purifying NMNH at scale and have also investigated the role of the molecule in NAD biology. The results demonstrate that NMNH is more effectively and efficiently processed into NAD in the cells than NMN and NR. Remarkably, the path to achieving this does not involve nicotinamide riboside kinase, NRK, or NAMPT, which other precursors require in order to make the transformation into NAD. More importantly, the data shows that NMNH treatment in mice can raise NAD levels in their blood, but also in multiple tissues such as the kidneys and to a higher level than NMN at a similar concentration. So what of the future? Steve Hill closes by saying, these results suggest that reduced NMN, NMNH, may prove to be a contender as the most effective NAD booster. He hopes that researchers focus on the production at scale and lowering the dose that is actually needed. Steve Hill says, this means that NMN can be created and made available at a far lower price point than precursors currently available, not including cheap niacin which at present carry a hefty price tag due to the costly manufacturing processes. So I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Uh, I think it's extremely exciting news that there may be on the horizon an even more powerful, more effective NAD booster. And as Steve Hill says, it could be made at scale even more cheaply than the current uh, NMN boosters. Now, this is probably not going to be uh, good news for the owners or people who have a financial stake in Alive by Science, JunaAge.org, and True Niagen, the likes of, of Charles Bremer. Um, but they're just going to have to adapt and they're going to have to move with the times. This is all very positive news. Um, there's going to be a dark side to this. Now that we know the molecular formula, and I'll try and remember to stick it up here, there are going to be people, scammers, who are going to say they've now started producing it, it's available, and there are going to be people who are going to want to make as much money as possible in as short a period of time as possible before they're found out and then they're going to disappear. So please be very wary in the near future, now that this is in the public domain, of anyone who's claiming that they've got this new NMNH uh, and they can let you have it at a really good price. Be very, 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 very wary indeed. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below about this. Uh, do you think it's exciting, as exciting as I do? Do you think that this has got potential? Because I certainly think it does. Even if it's just a thumbs up in the comment to say you liked the video or you thought the information was interesting. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video. As always, please take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.